All right, guys, so uh, I'm Giuliano. I'm here to talk to you guys about Quill and the theory behind that. And that's my Twitter. I don't bother you with like many things, just like these crazy things that actually call my attention that somehow I find on GitHub sometimes. And uh, we start telling you, no, before I start, I'll, talk about, I'll tell you something about me. Nowadays, I'm a software engineer at USwitch. And these are some of the nice technologies that we are using. Actually, these are the technologies that my team is using. Uh, we have some React, uh, no, yeah. We have that, some things have Go, some things have some Elixir. We don't have some Scala, nothing's perfect, right? But uh, we have like a pretty nice approach to solve our problems and we are hiring. So if you're interested, talk to me. If your boss is here, send me a tweet, that's fine as well. We can talk about it, uh, the company is always hiring and we have really, really nice and interesting problems to solve. And to start talking about Quill, uh, we start complaining because I'm pretty good at that. Who isn't, right? Like it's so good to complain about things. And it's interesting how many things we do to deal with things that annoy us, right? And like, I don't like databases. I, I don't know about you guys, but it's, it's annoying, isn't it? Like, since the beginning of times, in ancient times when we were working with Java, we had to handle databases somehow, right? And then initially we had the JDBC thing, and then you have to somehow include that nasty strings on our, I would say beautiful code, on our Java code, and to kind of solve the problem, right? What was an ideal? I mean, we have like the definition of our language, and suddenly you have to interpret a lot of strings to do something else. And I, I, I always like it. I always like it, uh, the security that the compiler gives me. Even though I'm working with Clojure nowadays, I still like it. That's why Scala is still my favorite language. But yet, uh, even, even in Scala or Java, when you're using JDBC, you have these problems, right? So some people try to solve these problems, and you have something like uh, Ibetis, right? I think it was called Ibetis, where you could put your strings somewhere else. What kind of organized that a bit more, but still not an ideal solution. And then we had the one that came to make our lives really curious. That's Hibernate, right? Who still works with, that someone works with Hibernate nowadays? No, nope, no, oh, poor guy. <laughs> no, I mean like, Hibernate, it's an interesting solution. I mean, you have like your database and you have the objects, right? I was discussing with Tom about uh, how objects kind of make everything a bit more difficult to understand nowadays. After working with functional programming, you start to have this way of thinking. And Hibernate adds more layers on the top of that. And I, I, I'll be honest, I really hate Hibernate. I mean, Hibernate is so bad that it has like its whole holiday. Like everyone that works with Hibernate knows that. It's, it's something that I call the Hibernate day. It's the day that you stop your project to solve all the, pro all the problems that Hibernate is causing to you. And everyone that works with Hibernate knows that. And it happens every three months. It's like, I hate that. And besides, it, it doesn't properly solve the problem. We still have, we have some type saving more or less over there when you're using uh, the, what's the name again? I don't even remember anymore. That's good, isn't it? Uh, we have that API, criteria API, that kind of supposed to make it safer for you. It kind of does, but you cannot do everything with that. We still have that HQL thingy. We still have strings, we're still interpreting things. It's not an ideal solution because it adds a lot and doesn't properly solve the problem. And I'm not, I always stop complaining because I can't complain for the whole, I can't complain the whole night about having it. Any plans, once carries and all these things, right? With, when it comes to Scala, we have uh, Slick, right? But I don't know if you were interested in Slick and try to read the code. I, I, I have the clear feeling that it's totally cowboy style. I mean, we try to solve the problem and it's all right, but the way that the structure of the code is it's kind of messy and I managed to find some weird problems with that. It wasn't what I wanted. I, I don't feel the, I, I don't feel that there's something behind that. I don't feel that there's something that can actually give fundamentals to that tool. And that's why I like Quill. 
This guy created Quill. Flavio Brasil is a friend of mine. He's an engineer at Twitter nowadays. He worked for SoundCloud before and he's contributing to the open source community for a while. And the interesting thing about Quill is based actually in a paper called A Practical Theory of Language Integrated Query. So someone come up with this, this principle, the idea that could solve uh, some of these problems that I mentioned before. Because ideally, working with Scala, working with any language, we don't want to process strings, right? Like we create combinators and parsing combinators because we don't want to do that. We make it really difficult sometimes when we think about it. And Quill is actually based at this paper, right? Uh, I, I think you guys can have a look at the page. Read it's just like 13 pages. And up until more or less the topic six, it's extremely understandable. The second half, <laughs> the second half, it has like all the, the, math, the math behind it. And you don't have to actually understand that. But uh, the, the principles behind it, the way that they, they explain that is quite clear and it's quite interesting. And I like the fact that Quill and the tool that they, they present to us, uh, they have these fundamentals behind it. So it's not just ad hoc solving a problem. They actually study that, they come up with the maths that would solve that problem. So, they have these analogies about Silla and Sharab, Charibdis, that was, they were two Greek beasts, and they represent these two problems that we have when we are using uh, Hibernate, for instance. Uh, when you are processing uh, strings, you can have a failure, because you cannot guarantee that's correct uh, during compile time. And you have uh, Avalanche would be the N plus one queries. Uh, I'm talking about Hibernate, but it happens a lot with, let's say, Active Record, if you work with Rails, for instance. And a lot of these tools, they have kind of have this problem here and there. So to do that, to, to handle that, they come up with these maths here, right? And they said not like, everyone can properly read that. So I brought you guys an approach to understand that as well. And that's an approach that I use most of the time. It's this one. So, yeah, don't think about it. You don't have to understand everything. It's interesting, but it's, unless that you have, like, I don't know, a postdoc in Lambda Calculus probably won't understand that. But it's still, uh, it's, it's good to know. There's, there's a theory behind. You can read the paper, you don't have to understand the math. The, the paper is good enough. Quill has some restrictions though. Uh, they, it came up with the idea of the modern architecture. So it's not a solution to handle gigantic uh, databases, even though I'm part of, uh, I'm one of the, I'm collaborating with, with Quill and I'm part of the Gitter channel and people come up with like some crazy ideas to abstract some queries. It's quite interesting. But uh, ideally I see that more like having smaller services. It's ideal to, to solve your problems for smaller services. So the restrictions are that you just have a single DB every time, right? Not, you don't, won't handle main, more than one database. Every time that you have a quote, a quotation that I'll show you in one moment, you have just one flat relation type, which means that you, every time that you define a quotation, you have just one query every time, no, you never have more than one at once. You define that quote somehow that you translate for just one query. Doesn't matter what you do, all right? And uh, considering that we are kind of translating SQL the other way around, we are translating the Scala language to generate the SQL, we just have operations. That's what we want, right? We have that, pre that out clear input, the operations and the output. So let's use a really simple query, uh, not the simplest one, but a common query as an example, right? So we have like a common select, a simple operation, and one or two joins over there, right? With uh, a condition as well. Using that one, imagine, if you imagine this code being translated to Scala, we would have something like that, right? I think it's... Uh, correct representation of what we had before. So 
We are looking for the name, um, we have the decoration for couples, people, people, right? It's pretty much that. When we add quill to this equation, what we have would be that. So we're going to wrap that to that uh, Scala query with this code because using that, that's necessary because what quill does is actually uh, it will grab this code, it will uh, extract the, the abstract syntax tree, synthetic tree from that and we'll reevaluate that in a different way. All right? So this code will generate this abstract syntax tree, right? <laughs> you, uh, if, you have, uh, if you have the code, you can simply create a really, really, really simple query. You see that you generate uh, just one filter, just like uh, a few things. But we have this abstracted idiom from the code, uh, from the code, we're gonna translate that to this uh, to this AST, and here is the place where we have that mathematics, right? So if you apply this principle here, uh, the math principle behind that, with that, so let's say we have this syntax tree, we have the mathematic mathematics, we will have this result here, right? Seems quite quite magic, right? It's quite interesting. So, how, how is it useful for us, in, even with small things? So, for instance, let's say that we have to abstract uh, some, just some values. Um, we can just define a simple function, wrap it with the quote as well. So, a let's define a function that takes a range, and we can simply apply that, right? Uh, Quill has the idea of context, that's something that represents your database. And the interesting thing here is that this code will generate that SQL, but just, sorry, uh, on compile time, we will have the generated SQL from this code, but it's quite, small, it's quite fast because it never touches the database until the very moment when, it, when you tell Quill to do so. So uh, this here is like the code that we have generated the SQL. This one is actually executing that. So at the end of the day, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no overhead because we don't have like a lot of layers doing some sort of magic. We have that, uh, that simple code that will be translated to a string in compile time. And then when you say, okay, execute that, it's just a string. So it's really fast because you can simply execute that with a JDBC code. You don't have to do that. We'll use that underneath. But at the end of the day, it's quite simple and quite fast. So uh, it, it provides a good performance overall. Uh, besides, we can have it this way as well. So you can have that, just that part and apply it later if it's interesting for you. We can abstract over predicates as well. We can define uh, a random predicate, whatever it is, simple one, a boolean. You can apply the function, right? oh, yeah, exactly. And you just apply it pretty much the same way. So the point is we can treat our database exactly the way that we treat our, uh, our collection, for instance, because we have the filter map, we have flat map, we have this common collection um, methods that we are used to use in our everyday job. And suddenly we can use that with Quill as well and we don't have to handle the database at that very old, weird way. We can think just about Scala, the way that you'd filter that, uh, that components, and you can simply translate that. Uh, another thing that's important to say, um, when you're abstracting your classes, you can, define, you can define your database just with case classes. You don't have to define hierarchy, hierarchies, and nothing as complex as that, but you can use just simple uh, case classes saying, Okay, this table has this name with these fields over here. And that's that, that's all that you need, all right? It's pretty simple, you don't have like hierarchies of objects or uh, nothing that usually we have in the hibernate. We don't have to think about it in general, unless that you want, but I don't think it's a good idea. My favorite, we can compose these queries now because they are just functions, right? So you just define a function here that takes a string, for instance, and then you apply that. You define, you just execute that with the flat map here, 
and you can define that with specific names, you can use that previous range, just compose them, they are useful, you don't have to write it in many ways, in different ways, it's just a function, everything behaves exactly like a function. You generate the SQL, the appropriate SQL for you. And uh, an important one, you query is able to dynamically generate that query as well, because we are always like taking parameters. The examples that I showed so far, in general, they are, um, the values, they already exist at that very moment, but when we are working, usually they, are, they don't, right? So pretty much what we have to do, these, ah, these are examples of the case classes to define something. Uh, we just have to lift, uh, it's just a method that Q provides you to guarantee that that, um, that type, that object, that uh, value will be lifted at the very moment when it's generating the query. If it doesn't happen, if for whatever reason you provide that value at runtime, it will fall down to the moment where Quill has to do it And runtime. It's not as fast, but I mean, I, I mean, unless that you are, I mean, you are touching the database, right? You already have some, some, some delay in it, so it happens. But in general, uh, it's, it's quite fast. It's still quite fast compared to, to everything else that we have. And it's really, really easy to speak. So I think I should show a quick example, right? That's the example that you can see at the site. So you have the, oops, sorry. Okay. So define your case class, define a simple code. You're filtering, you decide to map just to, to get the age, and then you have the DB, the context, to execute that. This, this example is the one that you have on Eclipse, because Eclipse shows you this sort of uh, warnings, right? And then you can use that as, as an example of, uh, th this feature is one of the experimental ones. How do we fix it? experimental nowadays? Anyway, you kind of have to turn it on because uh, you are actually checking it with the, the, sorry, not at this moment. This moment you are just generating the, generating the query, right? At the second moment, if you change it, it will break in compile time because using the other feature that I mentioned, you are actually checking against the database. You just have to turn this on if you want, and then you know that your query is, you fail right now. So considering that it doesn't matter what you do, you just have one query, you won't have trouble with the avalanche, and turning on these sort of things, you know that your query is valid in compile time. So you don't have none of these problems. So Quill supports MySQL, Postgres, SQL Server. I implemented that one, I'm quite proud of that. Um, H2, SQLite, Orient DB, I've never heard of Orient DB for a while, like, and someone implemented that, it was quite, quite cool, right? Cassandra, and nowadays we have even a module for Spark. So, we don't have one for Oracle. Did you know that, did you guys know that Oracle doesn't allow us to download the driver from Maven Repo? Like, I didn't know that. I, I was like, I'm trying to contribute, I'm trying to help you guys, they helped me first, right? I don't understand that. So yeah, I decided to do it with my SQL server, and they decided to help me, so why not, right? And uh, besides, we have some modules to, we have um, async drivers for MySQL and Postgres, right? They, they are already part of the community. So we are using these drivers to have the modules quill async, because nowadays we still rely on the drivers that are, that are already there. So we have the module, for instance, quill JDBC. So you have like everything that's here. When we execute that underneath, we will use the common JDBC drivers. At the same time, okay, that's something else, but we are kind of working on a, on a, a new async driver. And eventually the idea is to, using this async driver to implement uh, a new async module that's faster, because apparently Java futures or Scala futures are not fast enough. It's interesting. So it's, it's on my GitHub, if you have a look, I'm implementing the MySQL one. I never realized that I would actually have to study this sort of database in that level, but it's, 
It's quite cool. I would like to invite all of you to have a look at Quill. Um, it's interesting. If you would like to contribute, we have like a lot of issues open nowadays because people start to use and then we have like the most obnoxious bugs. It's really interesting. It's really cool. And I always enjoy the contributing with the community. At the same time, that it's the sort of thing that you won't do on your everyday job, where you are actually working at the tool that people are using. So I totally recommend. Uh, I think it's quite nice. And well, you can do your part as well. <laughs> oh no, that's done. Oh no, that was already. Oh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.